being 163 years old and covering <laughs> sports <laughs> in Dallas for Worth since 1980, that's like 42 years. Been on the radio since I was 14 years old and time just flies. Literally, I always say I can't thank all the Tolos, the listeners, the bleeders for allowing me to have an interesting life because it's been one wild ride. If I were to drop dead right now, man, it's been a lot of fun. Been a lot of fun. And over all these years, covering the Final Four was the hardest event I ever had to get credentials for. Really? Oh, my God. I had to turn in so much paperwork to get credentials. It was like I was doing taxes. Everywhere else, and it's, it's the number one reason this. When I worked at K104 for 30 years, I was like, I was doing Jackie Robinson kind of stuff because they had never, there was never like a black music station covering sporting events back then. And there are very few black reporters in the world of sports. Now, you see them all the time and former athletes. and But back in the early 80s, it was rare. It's like, there's me and that was it. And if you had another uh, reporter that was black, he was a newspaper writer. OK, so here I am, the sports director for K104, and I'm covering all these different things and I'd have to get these credentials. And they would say, well, uh, hmm, you're a music station, huh? Yeah, but we're full time news uh, an affiliate with the Associated Press and sports and weather and traffic updates. And, well, I don't know. We got to see if the press box that room. And with the final four, it was just insane. Now, the first one I ever covered it was 1986 in Dallas. And I got the chance to cover it because they let most of the local sports media cover it. Because the SMU was here, TC was here. I was covering all their games and stuff, mm -hmm. UTA. And so got a credential. Well, although every time I tried to get it, a credential for years, they wouldn't give me a credential. I literally would cover some final four games without a credential. The very next year, this is sounds crazy, but it's true. The very next year, in 1987, Indiana played Syracuse in the nor, down in New Orleans, just like it's going to be this year. Mm -hmm. Bob Knight actually allowed me to interview the players at the bus. K104 bought me a ticket to the game. Wow! So you didn't even actually have an official press pass. That's what I'm trying to say. But, but, so how did did you have a relationship with Bob Knight? Or? No. To, the only other time I've ever quote unquote met him that wasn't an interview, mm. he owns, well, he owned, used to own this basketball gym in Duncanville right off of 67. And it's called, I forget the name of it right now, but everybody knows it. It's, it's Bobby Knight. So he, when they opened it, he was there for the grand opening. And I, I was the MC for that grand opening. It was like okay. in the 1990s. And I talked to him about some stuff and he was kind of mad at Mark Cuban because Mark Cuban's a billionaire and he's like, he's hmm. a billionaire because he used to watch Indiana basketball games and I'm the coach. Right. So Bob Knight let me interview the players at the bus and I would interview the players in the hotel lobby. This went on for a couple of years while the NCAA would not give me a, a credential. But K-104 kept sending me. And then finally, a guy with the NCAA named Alfred White. I'll never forget this. I'm sending this stuff like taxes. And by the way, I wasn't the only one that they wouldn't give credentials to. Channel 8 couldn't even get a credential. That's dumb. It was insane. They it were, was just for the Final Four that was very difficult. All these other major sporting events, yeah, relatively Yeah, I could get them, easier. relatively speaking. I, sometimes I wouldn't be in the press box. I would just have a seat or something. Mm -hmm. But the NCAA was like, I would get stressed out every uh, January because I'm sending him for my credential request mm -hmm. and I would never get it. The only person who would ever get a Final Four credential in this area was Brad Sham at KRLD because Brad Sham, not because he was the voice of the Cowboys, but Brad Sham would work NCAA tournament games as doing radio broadcasts. Mm -hmm. And so when I finally got a credential, it was like a miracle. It was like a miracle. And when I was working at Channel 8, they would piggyback off of my credential. They said, Chris, since you're covering up Final Four, Dale would say, Dale Hansen, we're going to broadcast lives. We'll we'll use a camera, local camera guy from there, and you'll be on the scene and we'll enter, and you'll do some interviews. So Channel 8 would piggyback off of me because Channel 8, Channel 4, Channel 11, they couldn't get credentials either. It so was you, in, you're going K104 and Channel 8, basically. And the ticket. Two and, words, one stone. Yeah. Nice. And so I'm broadcasting wherever, you know, these final fours. So I covered 16 of them. 
and a lot of them were pretty cool. Now I'm, I'm, I'm setting this up because this game on this weekend with North Carolina and Duke, I've seen most of Duke's championships. Duke has won five of them, and I've seen four. I've nice. seen Coach, including the first ones. I've seen North Carolina. North Carolina has won six. If Duke wins, they will match them with six championships. I've seen um, three of North Carolinas. All right, I did not see the Michael Jordan one. That was two years before I finally got to finally cover the Final Four. He won. I think he won in 1982 on on last second shot. I wasn't there for that, but I was there for Dean Smith's final one. Nice. And I was there. So let me tell you about some of these crazy ones. I was there in 1988. This is one that broke my heart. I went to OU. Did you know that OU not only played in the Final Four, they played for the national championship. And in 1988, the football team had won the national championship in January. Three months, four months later, in early April, the basketball team, Abe Lemons was the coach. They were playing for the national, they were trying to be the first team in history to win the football national championship and the men's basketball championship the same year. Yeah, be sick. Well, this is the, one of these secrets that people don't know. On the final four, you got four teams, right? Mm -hmm. On that Saturday, the semifinals, the losing team's fans all sell their tickets. Because they have no reason to watch the team that beat them playing the national championship game on a Monday. Right. When they can get on out of there. And they, of course, they charge whatever they want. Yeah. But they all leave. Well, Kansas played Oklahoma in the national championship game. And the game was in Kansas City. Ironically. Mm. And all those Kansas fans bought up all the tickets because it's in our backyard. Of course. And it was like a home game for them. And oh, you had. Stacey King, Mookie Blaylock, uh, who, who's from Garland, uh, and a couple other guys. By the way, you want to hear this crazy story about Mookie Bla Blaylock? Yeah. You have you heard of the group Pearl Jam, right? Of course. So Mookie's agent was a good friend of, is a good friend of mine. His, his name is Robin Blakely. And Mookie was a good friend of mine. The Pearl Jam wanted, they were big fans of Mookie Blaylock. And they wanted to name their group the Mookie Blaylocks. But they couldn't because that's his name. So and they got in touch with Robin and asked how they could do this, and he said, "You you just can't." So they That's changed hilarious. it to Pearl Jam, but in honor of Mookie, they named their album Ten because that was his number. Wow, is that not crazy? That's hilarious. All right, so eighty eight, so random. Oh, eighty eight. Oh, you lost the game, and Danny Manning was leading Kansas, and I was so mad I couldn't believe. It. The other one that was real weird to me. This is the strangest loss. Uh, UNLV won the national championship. They beat Duke. The very next year, they're in the Final Four against Duke. It's a rematch. UNLV is undefeated. They're the, like the, it would have been the first undefeated national champion since Bobby Knight, Knight did it in the 1970s. They were overwhelming favorites. Larry Johnson, my boy Larry Johnson, right here from Dallas, mm -hmm. he was on that team. They were the running rebels. You couldn't keep up with them. And somehow or another, Bobby Hurley, Grant Hill, Christian Laidner, they won that game and it was semifinal. And they didn't blow them out and they barely beat them, but it wasn't going back and forth. They just always had like a comfortable five point lead. It was so weird. Wow. It was like, and there was a story that some mafia people in Las Vegas, they put some money on the game and they paid off the players. Oh. I was there, I was in the locker room. Those guys were in shock, but they weren't crying. They'd already won the national, but they would have made history. And I still don't know what happened. All I know, it was bizarre that they lost to Duke and Duke went on to win the national championship over the Fab Five freshmen of Michigan. That's right. And Jimmy King from Plano. And yeah. Man, so that's my boy too. Okay. I'm in this movie called Tobacco Road. It's North Carolina versus Duke. HBO came up with like a 30 for 30 and it was on HBO about Tobacco Road, the rivalry between North Carolina and Duke. I'm in this movie. I think I've told you this before. Did I tell you this before? I'm in this movie. I didn't even know I was in the movie. And they're like, Chris, I was at Oxnard a year later or whatever. I said, Chris, man, you were in the Tobacco Road movie. You've been to Cameron Indoor? I'm, no. I've never been to a Duke game. Kevin Hakelin has. I haven't been. Yeah. I haven't been to a Duke home game. Right. Well, you're in the movie. You're in the video, the documentary. So I had to go watch the documentary. Yeah. I'm in the documentary. But I wasn't 
in North Carolina, and those schools are 20 miles apart. I wasn't at Chapel Hill. I've been to Chapel Hill, but not for a Duke game at Chapel Hill. I've been to North Carolina game at Chapel Hill. The Final Four. In part of this movie, they're talking about how when Christian Layton and them went to the Final Four and won it, mm-hmm. they became rock stars. And you, they show me walking with the players through the tunnel and whatnot because Thomas Hill, who's from Dallas, I know Thomas real well. So I'm like, I was covering all those games. And there I am in the Tobacco Road movie. Mustache and all. Mustache and all. <laughs> That's awesome. So I've seen all these games. The Fab Five Freshman in Michigan. I, I've seen Kentucky win. The last Final Four I covered, me and RJ Choppy, Covered it for the fam when it was at Arlington Stadium. And here's a quick one. This was in 2014. Connecticut, UConn beat Kentucky. Kentucky I was at that game too. Julius Randle. Yeah. From Prestonwood Baptist. They thought they were going to win the whole thing. And instead, uh, the coach for Kentucky, UConn, played for the Mavericks a couple of years earlier. His name was Kevin Ollie. And yeah. Kevin Ollie's dad had a barbershop in Plano. Look at that. Just these little stories. Yes, yeah, Shabazz Napier. It was that squad, yes, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. Shabazz Napier. And that's who Michael Jordan, not Michael Jordan, that's LeBron. who LeBron wanted down in Miami with the first pick with it hurt. Come yeah, on. and then they, and they did it and then he bailed. He yeah. bailed. That's strong. I yeah, love it. Your story's confidential.